Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and let's discuss dark matter once again. A phenomenon that we still don't really understand very well, but that we are almost certain exists. Based on the observations from various galaxies, measurements from various galactic clusters, and observations and measurements from gravitational lensing effects. All of which would be impossible to explain unless there was something else, somewhat invisible, creating all of this extra mass. Something that could be up to 85% of all of the matter in the entire universe, and something that seems to be responsible for the majority of gravitational pull in the entire universe. But what exactly it is, or more specifically, what it's actually made out of, is of course that one big mystery of the entire universe. After years and years of search, nothing has so far been discovered definitively. But there's actually a really big playlist about this in the description below that goes through some of the ideas and some of the propositions. The most likely explanation right now involves what's known as axions. But in this video we're not really talking about dark matter as a phenomenon or potential explanation of dark matter, we're talking about an extremely unusual, unexpected and very difficult to explain observation from a pretty well-known galaxy. Here's the actual image, this is NGC 1277. An extremely old galaxy, that's actually even referred to as the Relic Galaxy, that's most likely at least 12 billion years old, and was originally discovered back in 1875 by Lawrence Parsons. And the reason it's called the Relic Galaxy is because of previous observations with various telescopes that established that this unusual galaxy most likely did not interact with a lot of neighboring galaxies, remaining untouched for billions of years. And so unlike a lot of other galaxies, including the Milky Way, that often have a lot of collisions, this particular galaxy might have remained completely untouched for a very, very long time. And so this unusual lenticular galaxy, located 240 million light years away from planet Earth, that's even several times more massive than the Milky Way, has always represented an intriguing target for studying galactic evolution and for learning about mysteries of the entire universe. But a lot of modern theories and a lot of models generally predict the existence of dark matter as the biggest part of mass in pretty much all galaxies in the entire universe. As a matter of fact, it's expected that a galaxy of this type would most likely have approximately 70% of mass as dark matter. And that's because of the modern theories explaining the formation of early galaxies. It all usually starts with the invisible cosmic web that seems to propagate the entire universe. This is most likely the foundation of all galaxies and predominantly is made out of dark matter. For example, because many of these galaxies are formed along the cosmic web, it was previously used as an explanation for why so many different galaxies relatively far away seem to contain relatively similar orientation and even rotate in the same direction. So basically this cosmic web, or dark matter based cosmic web, seems to be responsible for everything. It's sort of like the skeleton of the entire universe. Here's another way of trying to visualize this. And so inside this cosmic web, a lot of dark matter particles form what we refer to as halos that then attract a lot of hydrogen, making it swirl in the middle and eventually forming larger structures that eventually become galaxies. And as all of this gas is pulled into much denser clouds, it eventually results in star formation and physically visible galaxies. Or that's of course the best explanation we have right now for what we're observing from various galaxies and why so many stars in these galaxies seem to be rotating or orbiting around the center much faster than they should be orbiting. But that's of course not the only explanation. There's another explanation known as MOND or Modified Newtonian Dynamics that essentially tries to rewrite the gravitational formula and is able to explain some of the observations we're observing from various galaxies. Or basically, by rewriting Newtonian formula, it's able to achieve somewhat similar results. And so quite a few scientists have accepted this idea, because it doesn't actually require any dark matter and seems to explain at least some of the observations. And actually, there are some other explanations as well, but MOND right now is probably the most popular alternative to dark matter that does not require too many modifications. Just a quick side note, in the past, we've discussed a few discoveries that basically violate everything proposed by MOND and make it essentially wrong. You can find some of these videos in that playlist in the description. But one of the main points of MOND is that, assuming that it's correct, 
we're going to be observing very similar patterns in various galaxies, with essentially all of them appearing to contain dark matter and stars appearing to move really fast. And if there are no actual exceptions to this rule, there is actually a chance that maybe Mon is correct and maybe dark matter as a particle does not exist. Maybe it is all just about rewriting some formula. Once again, side note, it's not, but let's just keep going with this. And so here we then have two major explanations. Either dark matter is some kind of an invisible particle that we still don't understand and are having trouble finding, basically responsible for most of the mass in the entire universe, or the formula for Newtonian physics was always incomplete and by rewriting it, everything suddenly makes sense. Both of these explanations would then be able to explain why galaxies spin in such an unusual way, but only one of these explanations would be enough to explain everything else, including unusual gravitational landing and extremely large galactic clusters that would not make sense otherwise. In this case, the explanation required for all of this is an invisible particle and not a rewritten formula. But I guess more importantly, to some extent there is a way to invalidate one of these ideas once and for all, by discovering something that's completely unexplainable in one of these propositions, such as for example a really unusual galaxy that just doesn't obey any of the propositions involving dark matter or rewritten formula. And well, here we go. Here's that one galaxy. A giant, really massive galaxy, several times bigger and more massive than the Milky Way, that for some reason seems to show no signs of dark matter, challenging everything we understand and everything we know. A galaxy that was recently reanalyzed by the scientists from Instituto Astrofisica de Canarias, that analyzed the property we usually refer to as the galactic curves. In a typical galaxy like the Milky Way, that has a lot of dark matter, we actually expect all stars to orbit at a relatively similar velocity, no matter how far away they are from the center. Not so for galaxies that seem to lack dark matter that we've discovered previously, that seem to actually have something very different. Here the stars that are much farther away orbit much slower as well. We've discussed these galaxies previously, but all of the previous discoveries were usually extremely small, very low in mass, and even barely visible. These were usually what's known as UDF or ultra diffuse galaxies. This is the first one discovered so far that's basically extremely similar to the Milky Way. And so by observing this galaxy for a pretty long time and trying to understand what's going on here, the current suggestion is that it might only contain about 5% of dark matter by mass, out of expected 70% at least with the results from this paper working out extremely accurate details up to about 20,000 light years away from the center of the galaxy. And so at least in the center of this galaxy, the current observation suggests extremely low presence of dark matter. Now for ideas involving invisible particle, there are some potential explanations that we're going to discuss shortly. But for ideas like Mond, that's the end of the story. There's no way they can explain this, and it basically invalidates everything here because you cannot rewrite gravitational formula and get the same results. So yeah, once again, this is most likely completely incorrect. But we might have some explanations for what happened to dark matter after all. Or the first, okay, this galaxy is actually not really that usual. It's not a typical galaxy. Despite having almost no interaction with anything, for some reason it does contain a really, really massive black hole in the center. As a matter of fact, some of the initial estimates suggested that this was one of the most massive ever found. It was believed to be about 17 billion solar masses. Eventually this was recalculated and today we believe it's maybe about 1 to 2 billion solar masses. Still much larger than anything in the Milky Way, 250 times more massive as a matter of fact. On top of this, a lot of stars in this galaxy very likely formed in the first billion years of the existence of the universe. It really looks like most of the stars formed in just 100 million years, around 12 billion years ago, and stayed here completely unchanged ever since. Which is one of the main reasons we refer to this as the Relic Galaxy. It's a relic of the early universe, the universe that was forming stars in the first couple of billion years. And surprisingly the stars here were formed really fast, very likely thousand times faster than the current star formation in the Milky Way. So basically here, all of the stars appeared very suddenly, all at once, and have not changed much since. And because this galaxy stayed isolated without any collisions, and the black hole was pretty much quiet this whole time, 
yet managed to achieve extremely high mass, the implication here is that at some point it's quite possible the black hole shut down the entire star formation in this whole galaxy. So basically the black hole stopped stars from forming ever again. And so all the stars here are really old, at least 7 billion years older than our own sun. And strangely enough, or even more surprisingly, this galaxy does not contain any metal-poor globular clusters that are usually very common in other galaxies, which confirms that it's a relic galaxy that did not get a chance to interact with anything else and did not accrete mass from outside of the galaxy. And so the globular clusters, which often come from other galaxies, never really arrived here either. But the fact that it also has very little dark matter, that's the mystery that we currently cannot explain. Ok, there are some propositions, but nothing concrete and nothing certain just yet. The first one is kind of obvious. Maybe because of its position along the cosmic web, some of the medium surrounding this galaxy essentially stripped it of all of the dark matter over time. It's not clear how it did so, but because this acts kind of like a stream, it's possible that it just kind of left the galaxy with nothing stopping it, especially if there was more mass surrounding the galaxy compared to the galaxy itself. Now this is not something that's going to be easy to prove, but that's one potential explanation, especially because it has been used before to explain other similar galaxies containing extremely low amount of dark matter. And the other explanation involves the initial formation of this galaxy. Maybe during the initial formation, as the galaxy was formed from initial gas, because of the gravitational interactions, quite a lot of dark matter was basically driven away due to various gravitational interactions with all of the other stuff that was responsible for the formation of this galaxy. Now that's also something that's going to be very difficult to prove, but it could be proven using computer simulations. But physical evidence would not be very easy to discover. Nevertheless, this is a really important discovery. NGC 1277 is one of the most important galaxies identified in the last few years. But obviously none of these answers or none of these observations are certain yet. For example, to confirm this, the next step is going to involve William Herschel Telescope. It has an instrument known as WHT Enhanced Area Velocity Explorer that's going to be able to definitively determine if the actual result here or the observations from this galaxy are indeed as anomalous as they were presented in this paper. And following this we have the ESA's Euclid Telescope and the NASA's Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, both of which are planned for the next few years, that are hopefully going to provide more results and more explanations. But for the next few years it's quite likely that this unusual galaxy is most likely going to remain a really big mystery, but probably one of the biggest mysteries of dark matter discovered in the last few years. Completely unexpected, definitely anomalous, and something that presents us with the opposite kind of mystery compared to galaxies that seem to be filled with dark matter. Galaxies like Dragonfly 44 we've discussed previously in the video in the description. And so for the next few years it's probably going to still remain a mystery, but a mystery that one day might get solved. Nevertheless, at least for now, that's all we know about this unusual galaxy NGC 1277. We'll come back and talk more about this once there are more discoveries. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.